We don't have to deal with a K6. No K6 this time. We we have to deal with an MB5 and an XB54. Oh, that's fair. We can we can handle that. That's you know, doable. I never completed. I never got the operation orders for the MB5 back over Thanksgiving last year. I, I kick myself. I honestly, I know it's not, you know, anything super, but I kind of wish I had. I really well, do. Well, the worst part was I was actively trying to get it, but oh, all were the, I, yeah, all the crates I earned didn't give me the operation orders. Oh, wow. That's wild. Like, the first, every time we've done operation stuff, the first one has always had the orders in it for me. For the one with the Tempest, it took me five crates. Wow. I only got one crate that entire time, and it was, uh, it was the first one I opened. No, I have uh, I have horrible luck when it comes to RNG in video games. Genuinely, <laughs> you need some streamer luck. I need an XF15. <laughs> uh, so I, I gather you didn't get one then. Nah, there are so like from what I was gathering, the crates were giving people the planes in the order they were listed in the website. So that makes sense. There was no, there was no way I was gonna get it because. I didn't have time to actually, like, grind out all of the missions for the two phases of them over weekends. Right. I could only get, like, the first couple for a couple of aircraft. Instead, it just gave me what is effectively crate junk. Right. And my policy with premiums is keep them all. You never know when you'll get them again, and that's free gold. True. Um, uh, I would also say, because you never know when they're going to be buffed, but, uh, you know, that doesn't seem to be the case in warplanes at all. But <laughs> that's true for tanks. That's why I keep all my tanks ones. Well, probably warships as well, so. I'm sure if there were more resources given to warplanes, we'd have the potential of certain planes getting buffed. I mean, I get that. Um, and I certainly, if I were in charge of things at this point, I'm not sure I would give them more resources given the track record there, right? Like, so I get it, but it's still disappointing. All right, you got the P-47. I'm going to go up high then. Well, you could make the argument that if they were given more resources, then they would actually be able to try more things and actually, you know... Well, okay, so you say that, but the rumor is, I've never confirmed this, so I can't say for sure. The rumor is that 2.0, the rollout of 2.0, cost $80 million. No shot. That, that's more money than I would have anticipated, honestly. So, like I said, I've never confirmed that, but that was the rumor. Um, but it's whatever, it, whatever, million. however many millions it was, it was too many because it didn't buy them anything. So they they paid a lot of money for a change that didn't impact the uh, income or population. So. Well, their reputation was already tanked at that point. Oh yeah, totally. Like at that point, it wasn't a problem with the game; it was a problem with the world's perception of the game, and uh, the world thought the game was crap. Well, and it, in some ways it was, again, because they didn't, it was. they didn't want to listen yeah. to anybody. 1.0 had a lot of flaws and a lot of issues. I think everybody can agree with that. Personally, I think they, they did end up fixing a good amount of them in 2.0. No. Yeah. None of the core well, issues. I don't think any of the core issues got fixed in 2.0. So, like, okay, well, let's, this, will be good, this will be an interesting discussion. What do you think they fixed? from 1.x to 2.0. They made the game not play like tanks anymore, which I personally did not like. Okay. I personally, I hated that, you know, if you got if you got shot down the one time, you were out for the rest of the match, and you'd have to either spectate or go... or, you know, go back to your hangar and pick something else. I found that to be really, really frustrating. So the, my question to that would then be, do you think the fact that planes was like tanks is the reason that it was failing? I'm not sure. Personally, I would say it was a factor because I don't really like tanks. I don't like the way tanks plays. Right. So 
in my opinion, the game was too much like Tanks, and that could have been a big contributor to why it didn't do as well. Now, you, you could also say, well, War Thunder's in the exact same space, so, you know... I don't know, like... It, it's, it's, it's a very large-scale question, right? And uh, I'm not a game dev, so I don't really know all of the factors that would go into it. Right. And genuinely, for like, when we did, when we were doing Attrition, I thought that was some of the best games I ever had. Right. So like, maybe the big flaw with Warplanes in 2.0 is the wrong mode is default. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it, for sure. I, I do think, you know, it's as, and I've argued that in my Arrow video, that it's easier for new players to grasp what you're supposed to do in Attrition than it is in 2.0. So, for that reason alone, if you want to build the player base, your best bet is, you know, go to Attrition full-time. I would also, I, I wouldn't make an argument as a flaw of 2.0, and I'm sure you'd agree with this, is that there's too much emphasis placed, like, in Conquest mode specifically, too much emphasis is placed on PvE elements instead of the uh, PvP. Right. Like, the actual stuff people are here for. People are here to fight other planes, not uh, not shoot ground targets or computer ADAs defending sectors. Right. Which, again, is why I really, really enjoyed Attrition and Bomber Escort, right? Those two were really fun game modes, because it wasn't just, oh, take over the ground targets and win the game by points. Right. It was, you can take over the ground targets, and they will help you win the game, but you win the game more by killing enemy bombers or killing enemy planes. Yeah. So, and see, uh, this is where I think, so I, the reason 1.x failed, in, in my opinion, is not um, that it was too much like World of Tanks, but that there was a fundamental imbalance in the airplanes. There were, and you can find 1.x videos on YouTube that'll kind of point this out, but there were planes that were unbeatable. If they were flown correctly, you could not lose in them. And uh, and so as a result of that, they they beefed up the PVE element because that was their counter to heavy, to really good planes. Rather than balancing everything, the counter was, well, we'll make PVE planes better and that way, you know, PVP pilots can't stay at high altitude and just, you know, take people on one by one. They have to kind of change it out. And they, they ramped that up for 2.0. But the problem is they still didn't change the balance in the planes. And so <laughs> you know, eventually what happens is that that imbalance in the planes, pl pilots figure out how to still use those advantages to win the match. And that's still what happens. The number one problem, right, mechanically in the game is there's still planes that are too powerful that can dominate a match. Uh, that right. was never yeah. something that changed. So, Like, on the Discord, we've had many conversations of just people in general are saying, well, heavy fighters are dominant through, like, the mid-tiers and, like, Tier 3. And then but once you get to, like, Tier 7 and up, it's like, oh, no, here come the bombers, and they're going to just destroy the entire map, and you ain't going to do nothing. Right. And ground attack aircraft are useless, and multi-role fighters are useless. And it's like, we have we have two classes of aircraft that are overshadowed by bombers and light fighters. We have heavy fighters that are just good all over the place, and we have bombers that are really only good tier 7 and up, and we have light fighters that are just okay until you get to tier 7 and up, and then they kind of start to suck because they can't actually win you the game. Right. Yep. So you're right. There is there is absolutely a fundamental imbalance between the five roles of the uh, of the game. Yep, and that was that was true one point X as well. So that's why I say they spent all that money and got nothing in return. <laughs> ah, no, you could yeah, you could absolutely make an argument for that. Uh, now, over the past couple of years, I've seen more players getting on though. At, at least on NA, there is. So yeah, no, I think so. I, I think there's like, a little bit of a pop I, increase. I, I, yeah, I feel like Warplanes is gaining some momentum. There, there is a little bit of momentum being gained recently. Yeah, I think so. I can't really judge how much momentum because unlike other games there, there really isn't a huge creator scene well uh, so, so like... i think the 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 probably what why we're seeing is the lower tiers are, are better now than they were two years ago a year and a half ago and and part of that is the silver lining of powerful tier 7 and tier 8 aircraft because if you really wanted to feel good about yourself and curb stomp people you used to just go down to tier 4 
but now you can go to tier eight and you can make more money and get more experience while doing it. So the silver lining of ultra powerful premium aircraft at high tiers is it's cleared out the lower tiers for new players to have more success and more time to learn the game, right? Yes, but technically speaking, you do still have the people that go down the tier three and four and just absolutely sure. annihilate everyone. Sure, but they're doing it less often now, games. right? Like they're not doing it every match. They may go That's in fair. once a night, right? They're not going to stick at tier, tier four and stay there. They're going to do whatever they need to get their daily and then get out again. Because every time they play in their tier four, it costs them money because it's not as much as they can make in their tier eight, right? But they'd rather find their P61 or B29. Right. Yep, exactly. So, anyway, my, my two cents. <laughs> I That's an interesting way to look at, like, overpowered premiums. Because, like, I fl- my average flights, I fly, but I typically stick in a range of five to eight on a nightly basis for aircraft I fly. Right. right. So like here here's another German plane I can I can pull out here in that band it's the 109Z which is, has a 73% pilot so this should be very interesting. Well, at tier 7 you have your choice. I can play my most played aircraft the A8 <laughs> or I can play the K6. Honestly up to you. I I <laughs> <laughs> you, you've, you've kind of just been matching me, and uh, I, I didn't expect you to do that. So you can fly what you want. Well, let's uh, let's do a K6 then. Why not? All right. Uh, just checking the sure. Can I get an upgrade? No. I have two more upgrades to get on this thing before it's elite. I have airframe and the middle engine, even though I already have the best engine because somehow I already researched that. Uh, probably from the other line. I don't know what's the Z. Uh, let's see. So the mid one is the DB. Oh, that's interesting. The mid one is not uh, not on anything else. So. But I have the I have the best one already. A third one. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that one's on a lot of different things. Two hundred nine, one ninety, one fifty two. Oh, that's probably where I researched it. Then I got it on the one ninety. Yeah, I got it on the one ninety. There you go. Uh, yeah, we're good. All right. Now watch, we're going to run into flighted P-51Ds, and they're going to be a pain in my butt. Or, you know, we could run into a flighted (laughs) (laughs) P-61 (laughs) B-29. I feel like that would be worse. We could. I mean, it is possible. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but, uh. But anyway, you, you, your point about the the overpowered premiums and the higher tiers dragging people, like clearing out the low tiers, is an interesting one I hadn't thought of before personally. And, and I'll I'll be the first to say I don't think Wargaming planned that at all. Like, <laughs> no, I, I completely agree with you on that one. That's way above their uh, uh, level to interpret or uh, or understand. But but I do think that's part of it. I do think when I go down to tier two, three, four, five, you know, occasionally now. I feel like I see more players. I feel like I see more new players. Um, mm-hmm. And I do think the game is friendly in terms of, you know, the XP and silver it gives you to, to try and catch up. There, it's not an overwhelming task to have a free-to-play and from what, I, from what I gather, the game is very generous in regards to free XP and silver. Where the game is stingy is aircraft experience. Yeah. In my personal opinion... I think there, it it takes too long to research the next aircraft in the tree. Now, obviously, yes, you there's free experience you can put in that, and then there's also like there's boosters you can apply, and there's XP weekends, which I think we're in one of those now. I mean, it, but uh, overall, on average, for a win, I only get like three thousand average aircraft research points. Sure. So, which means from going from tier nine to tier ten is sixty matches. Now, in tanks, that'll take you two hundred matches, and in warships, it might take you even more than that. So that's what I just compare on a comparative basis. It's easier to climb the ranks in this than it is other wargaming titles. Okay. Yeah. Other wargaming titles. Yeah, for sure. And and really better than War Thunder, which at this point is really all that matters. <laughs> yeah. 
Also, uh, there is a flight, but it's tier six. Yep. So I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is uh, bounce this garrison and then counter cap the mine. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do some damage over the command center. Okay. That sounds good. Although there's only two planes there, so once you get your two planes, you may want to bounce out of there and head to. Well, the command center's got three light fighters. Oh, over three. It. Sorry. Yes, my bad. But that's yeah. So. That should be close. I, that should be enough once you do that to capture a neutral zone. So, well, command centers require one ground target to be destroyed in order to cap. Right. So. Yep. Oh, there's a four ten right there. Hang on, I'm gonna switch for an enemy four ten. Sounds like a good plan. Now, if only my guns would hit. <laughs> that is the trick with the 109Z. That's the trick with all the high-tier German aircraft, really. Until you get the rotary cannons, at which point you're kind of you're kind of good then. Of course, he fled the zone, and then I got my kill stole. All right. Push on to the mining plant here. My thought is we can always take the um, airfield back, but it's going to be hard for us to take the mining plant. Well, and them too, so. It doesn't help that I'm not in a plane equipped to do any ground, ground target damage at all. Right. So. The most I could do in that kind of regard is just, like, bomber hunt. Which, from what I gather, the 109Z is, like, great at bomber hunting. Oh, it's magnificent. That's the one thing it does really well. Because, you know, large gun spread, large target, yep. equal easy, easy hit, hit, easy hits. Yep. So this 410 was ground pounding. So... let my HP regen before I head back over to you or to this other garrison. I'm still fighting over this command center, by the way. It's, uh... Oh, dogfight, huh? All right. Let me, um... It's been an interesting furball, that's for certain. This is where cheaping out and getting the free pilot comes back to bite me, as uh, yes, <laughs> it, it takes me a little longer to actually get my guns on target now. <laughs> All right, I am headed to the airfield, which it looks like we might be close to capping. Oh, never mind. All right, I'll go to the garrison instead. I'm gonna take a swipe at this P-51A. His name is Regret My Life, and I plan to make that a reality. <laughs> hey, that's that's someone that I haven't seen before. Uh, yeah, I don't don't recognize the name. But he's got a specialized P-51A, so he's probably been around for a little while. Sure, maybe a rename. Sometimes this game, you get so much gold, you don't know what to do with it. So just uh, rename yourself uh, repeatedly. And I got my kill stole. Damn it all. There we go. For what it's worth, I do actually like the Z. Like, there's a lot of people in my clan that don't. Uh, but, uh, I like it. It's, it's just really different. tricky. It's, uh, you know, once you, if, if you can fly heavies and you can get used to the guns, it's great, but it is not for the casual heavy flyer. Um, 
See, I'm a, I'm a light fighter main, but I main the energy light fighters, so I feel like I've adapted pretty well to the heavy fighter playstyle for the most part. Right. I can do well in them. It's just I don't do as well consistently as I would in like one of my P51s or or the 109s actually. Right. Cuz uh I've actually been doing fairly well in the 109s. All things being considered. I'm on him. Oh, I'm about to regret my life unless you just wipe out his wing right there, which means he's just... There you go. Absolutely shredded. These guns hit hard. Yeah, they do. That's that's the trick, right? Is it just... You have to get used to them. <laughs> if, if I could get guns on target, it, it dies. It doesn't matter what it is, it dies. B-32's up top. All right. Man, bots are stealing all my kills, too. I can't get anything done over here. Ta-da. Yeah, I, the only medal I got is the freaking assist one. Yeah, that was... Uh... It's all right. It's one of those games where it's like, try as you might, all you can ever do is get somebody low for someone else. Well, it's one of those games too where there is a complete mismatch, and yeah, you know, matchmaker just doesn't doesn't handle that well, that situation well. So, but that's okay. We got to fly some fun aircraft. 